You guys hold regular jobs and shit too, or what? Hell yeah, yeah. man. Somos pobres, man. What do you do? I kill bugs for a living with my dad. Oh, yeah? Yeah. My boy does that too, and she's, it's called the Hit Squad. <laughs> The Hit Squad? The Hit Squad. Oh, the Hit Squad. <laughs> yeah, his commercials are crazy, fool. It's like superhero shit. It's crazy. It's shit, so. And you, what do you do? You're mad away. <laughs> ah, tachingo sí, nesto sí, también, güey. Sí, 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 sí. Nah, I'm just playing. I work for his dad. The same thing. Oh, okay, so you guys So, be... somos mataratas. Yeah? Sí, sí, so, oh, you get, okay, yeah. pest control and shit. So, cool. uh, this episode is sponsored by JLV Pest Control. Yeah, Let's go. <laughs> Thank you for the promo, Dad. Yeah. Thank you for sponsoring us and <laughs> for the last two K-A-R, years. K-A-R, K-A-R, <laughs> kill all rats, dog. Kill all rats. <laughs> A, a rap a rap group named K- KR. This is back in 2000. This is when I used to I was signed, and uh, with uh, Fat Joe had his had his team, and they had a and they had a group called KR Kill All Rats. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was like when the whole snitching shit was going yeah, on yeah. with like game. I don't know how old are you guys? Thirty. No, it's twenty seven. Oh yeah, no, you guys were like fucking eight when that shit was going on. He was in the nuts. I was still. How old are you? Twenty three. Oh, si te falta, güey. Yeah. Ah, si te falta. He was, doing the, he was doing his dad's ball sack. Yeah. He was waiting to come out. Uh, but, damn, it's also like podcast, man. The most Let's authentic, go. most organic podcast out here. You already know. Ah, te, tenemos público, mucha gente acá sí, alrededor. Sí, 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 sí. Todo el público. <laughs> but your host, Dusko. You already know it's your boy, Dylan. Mr. Dylan. Yes, sir. Again, thank you guys for watching, subscribing, sharing. And today, we changed a little bit of scenery. We're still in downtown LA, how we mm-hmm. always do. Jesus. Pero si tenemos a un... We have a legend. We have one yeah, of the... Tanto ahorita, sí, yeah. Sí, sí, Already? Sí, sí. Yeah, yeah, you gotta give the flowers. Yeah. Gotta... Siento que me falta todo, yeah. One of the funniest guys out here. <laughs> he's a rapper. He's a trapper. <laughs> he's a <laughs> trapper? Did he see he's a trapper? <laughs> he's a trapper. A tra- you're a, fra- you're a rapper's you favorite trapper. Yeah. Now, he's a comedian. He is... An influencer, if you can say that, but he's much more than all that. He is also a director. Mm. He is also a producer. And I think one of the titles that I don't think people share enough is he is a father. Yep. So exactly. we have the one and only Mr. Concrete in the house, <laughs> baby. We got me loose holes right here, fam. <laughs> oh, uh, it's because I, I never wanted to work, dog. <laughs> so I just had to, like, Find my way through life, trying to figure it out, dog. You know, I've done everything in life and got me here, dog, with you guys. You know, and congratulations, yeah, congratulations man. to us, say, yeah. say, 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 congratulations say, say, to you guys, say, man. Yeah. Big ups. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Finally, I know Thank you, you saw. Me. Yeah. I know you've seen all the like the twenty DMs that I sent you. Yeah, no, no, no. It's just you know, like, uh, dude, like. At Thank first, you for I, ignoring at first, at first, I didn't want to do podcasts because I was like, I'm not that interesting. Way, but quieren hablar conmigo que pedo way. Like, I didn't, you know, I didn't. I still don't think myself as anybody. Of importance to talk to, you know, but, yeah. um, you know, persistency is, is key for me. And I've always been persistent and that's how I get stuff done. So it's like when you guys were persistent with me, I'm like, all right, let's do it, you know. And, uh, you know, like I just did, you know, like I just did the homies, uh, yeah. Seba shit. And fool, it's because I saw him in person. He was like, do my podcast. And I was like, all right, fool. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. nah, nah, but he was really cool, man. He was, you know, like I met him in person. We just chopped it up and it was like, all right, fool, I'm down. Let's do some shit, you know. And, uh. You know, just, you know, seeing his page and seeing what they, you know, what they do. I was like, all right, man, these guys take it seriously. And, and you know, just like I did with you guys, I was like, all right, cool. Like, it's not just like a one-off thing, you know, like where, you know, they're, you know, they're, you know, they're just doing it just to pasarlo and then they miss three weeks. And then it's like, vale madre, you know, it's like, okay, mm-hmm. it's persistency to me is key. You know, it's like, si de veras veo que le están echando ganas, güey, pues, porque yo le echo ganas a todo lo que hago, you know, güey. Yo le echo en todo el empeño. And it's a cool, speak Spanish? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, pues, you know, like, I, I try to go hard and... Yo le echo todo lo que yo puedo, pues también quiero trabajar con gente igual, güey. You know? yeah. Si no, ¿para qué pedo? Uh, no, no te entendí en español. <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we only speak Spanish. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think that's, that's super key, is yeah. trying to find, trying to build relationships with people that match that same energy. Yeah. Como si lo vas a echar ganas, con exactly. todo. Sí. No, no pongas excusas. I think that comes down from our jefes, too. Mm-hmm. Not missing a day of work. Echándole ganas desde el principio hasta ahorita. Sí, yeah, well. And um, I did see one of your one of your videos, you know, and I believe everybody has seen the one of the funniest ones where when you're bring your kid to work day with your dad. Oh yeah. And oh, that shit was funny as fuck. Yeah. So 
but before we get into all that, I, I do want, we start from the beginning. Mm-hmm. De donde naciste, donde creciste, y for the people, our audience, and also your audience that may just not know that information, where mm-hmm. were you born, where'd you grow up? I was born in Van Nuys, California, in the Valley. Presbyterian Hospital, room 708. No, I'm just kidding. Highway. <laughs> it was a hey, Tuesday my. afternoon, fool. At least he knows where he was born. 237 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Wait, at least you don't know where you were born? <laughs> no, nah, no. You don't know how, boy, you just fucking. Somewhere, out, somewhere out, in Mexico out, City, ahí, güey. Pinch hospital, like, cool. Maybe in the behind the truck. Chingón, güey, pero pues ya no llegaste, güey. Huh? Mira, it's not about where you're from, it's where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so Van Nuys, and you know, I mean, I grew up in the valley, bro. That was, you know, that was most of my, you know, like most of my upbringing. That's, I, I didn't really move around. It was Van Nuys, and I moved to, like, I was in Panorama City. And then from there, we, you know, we moved to San Fernando, and then that's where I kind of had my, you know, my kid, you know, my kid years, bro, going up there. And, and you know, that's where I learned everything, you know, if I can. English, Spanglish, todo el pedo, the culture of everything that you know that I grew up with, and uh, and then eventually I ended up moving to uh, you know to Palmdale for a little bit. Then I lived in Long Beach once I met my wife, and then but yeah, man, for the most part it was just in the valley, man. That's where I'm from. I'm, I'm, I'm an A one eight, bro. I'm an A one eight kid. Born and raised. Born and raised, bro. I will see, Tienes cara de desmadroso, güey. Yeah, I was, I was wild. I was wild, yeah. When can were you always? A funny person growing up? Were ever you- since I can remember, this is all I ever wanted to do. But, you know, growing up with, like, you know, growing up with immigrant parents, perdido, pues, está cabrón, güey, because they don't know. You know, they, they don't... Ellos vienen a trabajar aquí, güey. O sea, no vinieron a, a, a ser famosos, no vinieron a ser, a, ver, a ser DJ. So mm-hmm. I remember being a kid for, like, five, six, taking my dad's camera, and I was already watching TV, like, that I shouldn't have been watching. I was watching Mad TV, or uh, I was watching In Living Color and shows with comedy. And I remember, you know, my dad putting on Risa en Vacaciones and all these old comedy sketch movies, bro. Yeah. And I remember taking his camera and me doing videos and I knew at an early age, bro, that this is, I like, I like being in front of the camera, seeing them wackas and doing funny shit. And I was a kid that would run up and, you know, like in front of the camera and be like, ah, and I was, I was that kid, you know, I was that kid. And, and, but you know, my parents didn't, you know, like they just thought it was like a phase, like, oh, pues, ta, ta on this. you know, yeah. he's, he's a little wild, you know? Mm-hmm. And I remember I, around eight or nine, I told him, I was like, I want to be an actor and, you know, the, again, dog, growing up with immigrant parents, we pues, cabrón, we. They don't know where. They don't know that you need to get headshots. They don't know that you need to have an agent. They don't know that there's audition process. And for my parents to take me to an audition and leave work, I was like, "What do you mean, dog? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're not gonna yes. leave work to go take me to an audition." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, like go to school y echale ganas y arrete una beca or do something and mm-hmm. ponte a trabajar. You know, so yeah. they didn't really see it at the time. You know. And then it wasn't until I was like 12, 13 that I started um, I started uh, working at this place called Ray, Son- uh, Ray Sonora's Party Rentals. And the only reason I worked there is because it was a record store and I wanted to, you know, start getting into DJ. Because the acting thing was like, was to me, like living in the valley and being 20, 20 minutes away from Hollywood, fool, I had never even been to Hollywood. I thought Hollywood was fucking across the world <laughs> i didn't know you know like yeah. i'm a kid my parents you know like we didn't have money just dude my parents thought it cost money to go to the fucking walk you know the walk of fame you know like they you yeah. know like we thought like my parents thought chilies was hella expensive <laughs> fool, you know what i'm saying like ta cabron, you know like no because they didn't get it fool, you know like, yeah, yeah, and to yeah. them it was just like i, I come in la casa y, y abrí guatelas, you know but so i remember like i was like 12 13 and I started partying, I started going out, and I wanted, I, like, I started looking at DJs, and so that dude hired me, I was 12, 13, bro, and I used to, I used to clean all the chairs and the tables, and, uh, because it was like a party rental store, yeah. and I went from cleaning chairs and tables to fixing all the records, because he used to have, like, a bunch of DJ sets, and he used to have a bunch of DJs come in every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, he used to give them a gear, and he used to drop them off at different parties, mm-hmm. so one Saturday, he was like, man, me cayó. Me quedó mal este cabrón, and I was like, I'll go. I was like, I know all the music. Yeah, I'll go. <laughs> I volunteer, I volunteer. I was like, I'll take you, like, you know, let me go, I'll go. He's like, no, I'll go, that's morro. And I was how like, old, how old are you at this point? I was like, like 12, dog. Oh, shit. 12, 13. And then he was like, I'm going to press. And I remember I got my little case of CDs, and I knew all, I knew all the music, bro, because it was like, it was merengue, reggaeton, cumbia, sonoyena, I knew all the music. Oh, shit. My okay. parents were always at parties, so I mm, knew what would yeah, hit, yeah, you yeah. know? 
There you and I would say you were Shazam in it, but there, I don't think there was Shazam at that Not point. even close. <laughs> Shazam. <laughs> not even close. There, there, was, there was no social. There was none of that, fool. Yeah. You had to learn how to DJ, you know? Mm-hmm. So I remember being 12 and at, at a bautizo, fool. And, and when I get there, the guy's like, ¿Y tú qué? ¿You the DJ? I was like, yeah, soy el DJ. No mames, me estoy pagando tanto dinero, mi mamá. And they sent me a kid. Yo soy un morro. And I was like, chill. And my dad was like, no, pues déjala que haga su pedo, you know? Because yeah. the dude just dropped me off when he was gone, fool, you know? Because <laughs> he, like, he, yeah, he knew it was going to be some shit, you know? <laughs> and then so I started playing, fool. And then, you know, he started playing. And la gente pues empezó a bailar. And then next thing you know, fool, se hizo el desmadre. And oh. there was a party, fool. Oh, shit. But I was such a kid, fool, that when they threw the bolo, I even got into it, too, oh. fool, you know what I'm saying? Like, scratch, scratch the disc, you throw all you. Because I was still a kid in my head. I was like, oh, fuck yeah, no, you know? <laughs> like, it was you know, he's like, These are my tips, bro. These are my tips. And my dad's waiting outside <laughs> food till like 12 midnight, food, just waiting for me to stop and DJing. And yeah, pues ya me dejaron ir. And I just kept DJing for him up until my dad was like, Nah, fuck this, fool. No te paga nada. Te paga bien poquito. He was paying me like 35, 40 bucks a day, fool. Oh, wow. And but back then, I mean, what people don't understand is that back then, well, yeah, like still, fool. He was, he was charging 250, 300, and he was giving me <laughs> 50 <laughs> bucks. You know, <laughs> so the dude was, you know, so so my dad was like, Sabes que yo tengo comprar tu, tu, tu equipo. And he bought me my own gear. Oh, I got shit. my shirt tables. And I started doing my own parties. And by the age of 16, I had my own 20, uh, 21 and over club in Simi Valley. It was called a tequila room. And I had no business in there. I was 15, 16, but I was running my own club. Oh, and, I, and I was coming home with like $1,500 a night, bro. And $1,500 every Friday for. A fucking 16-year-old, bro. I was making more money than my dad was making in a month, dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I was able to help. Obviously, for I was fucking it off. I was buying people drinks. And by the time I got home, for I was down to like 800 bucks, you know? You know? Yeah. And so, you know, that was that, dude. And I just kept going. And by the time I was seven, 16, 17, like, I started getting really bored with the DJ and shit. I was like, ah, this is it. That's it. Like, I'll do something more. And then I started making music, man, producing. Can Can you actually, like, Go back a little bit and like that feeling that that emotion that your dad is gonna invest in you and buying a DJ set. Well, like, yeah. Well, it, like, did that mean something crazy to you at that moment? Yeah. Or now do you think about it? Yeah, of course. It, 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 it still means something to me because that was the that was the beginning of what I was gonna become eventually. You know, because um, even then, like, it was a lot of money for my dad. Man, like a thousand dollars, you know, for this or like, you know, I remember we came to downtown right here and. We went to like the, the little, little DJ system, and yeah. he was like, "Damn, mil doscientos, está cabrón." He's like, "No, pero viene con bocinas y todo, pa. I need it, I need it, you know." <laughs> and yeah, though, of course, you know. But you know, as a kid, I thought my dad had it, you know. Yeah. So I was like, "Come on, man, like let's get it," you know. Yeah. Not knowing that my dad was gonna be in debt for two years because he was selling pagos, you know. La cura sal, la cura sal. Yeah, type of shit, you know. <laughs> So 30% then, percent interest. Yeah, well, we'll see, we, you know, 30% interest and it doesn't fix your credit, you know? <laughs> exactly. So, so, yeah, like, I'm doing that. And yeah, though, like I, I, like, I knew at the time that it was, I felt that my dad was like, it's either I do this or este way, baba del madre, because <laughs> I didn't want to go to school. He knew I didn't want to yeah. do, there was, there, there was times where he would drop me off. You walk away. And I would, and, and I would see him leave and then pff, I would ditch immediately. I wouldn't even go in for him. And there was one time he caught me, fool, because I because I forgot something like, in the car, fool. Mm. And I'm walking away from the squeeze up on the bus. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's good with my amigos, que la chingada. No, 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 regresa de la chingada. Come on. You've been like, oh, te estaba siguiendo tickets. Yeah, yeah, so he knew something was so he knew, bro. He yeah. knew that if, <laughs> if 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 he didn't do this for me, that I was gonna just llevar el madre todo el pedo, you know? With without respect, was was your dad a hard dad? Like like punishment wise or like Nah, nah, my mom was. My mom was the enforcer. My mom was more the enforcer, you know, but again, do you go back to they can't miss work. They 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 you know, first of all, they don't they don't know what laws here. They don't know that they're allowed to take a day off every now and then or to them asking for a day off to come see me play basketball was like, how me van a correr? Then yeah. miedo way. Then yeah, miedo yeah, yeah. decir, I want to go see my son. <laughs> I, I want to go to a PTA meeting. I want to go see him at the assembly. Yeah. Like my parents never came to go do the Christmas graduation sing along, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. they never saw any of that shit because they were too scared to ask for the day off, bro. You know, you, so were you missing that at, at a young age? I didn't know any different. 
He's like, homeboy didn't even go to school, güey. Yeah, yeah, like, didn't even there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. School. It's like, well, I didn't know any different, dog. You look, I mean, I remember seeing other parents go and shit, but I didn't, I didn't know any different, so I didn't know that I missed it. Mm -hmm. Up until now, that I'm like, oh, I would have been cool, you know? Like, mm -hmm. that would have been cool, so... I try to be that for my kids, you know? Exactly, yeah. You know, I try to, you try to do, but again, I don't blame my parents, bro, because they were just trying to make shit happen. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't hold, I'm not resentful toward my parents. I'm not, none of that. Like, they were doing the best they could, bro. It's not like, you know, it's not like they were doing, it's not like my dad was at home fucking shooting up drugs and just being a, 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 a shitty person. Like, that's yeah. not the case, you know? Te la estaba chingando para salir adelante todos, güey. Now, if it would have been the other way around, where he was just being a dick and being a drug addict, then yeah. may maybe maybe I would hold resentment towards him. But no way, I said no. I didn't know any different, you know. But that, that's it's a, it's a great thing that, that you put it that way in those terms, porque mucha gente le pone la culpa a sus papás. Yeah, oh, you weren't there. That's why I'm. I'm the no, way I am. Like, so. Hey, like at the end of the day, you get older. It, yeah. El tiempo va a pasar. Sí, abuelo. And, and by the time you graduate. I even think now, junior, senior, you kind of, you should know what the fuck you're kind of doing with the world or the consequences. But todavía, like, there's still people that are 24, 25 and older. Nah, bro, porque mis parents hicieron esto y no hicieron It's like, bro, but to what point are you going to stop blaming your parents? Like, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Of like, course, we, so. I mean, we said it before, too. Like, we can't blame them. Like, mm -hmm. how you said they came to a whole new country. Mm -hmm. No, they didn't know probably the the laws, the rules. They didn't know that they can take days off or what days off were actually were what mm -hmm. they were. There was no fucking PTO. Like they don't. Yeah, they, they don't get that. Yeah, they don't get that. They didn't know that. They just knew come work hard, get a paycheck, support my family. Yeah, but he got the laws. You know, that's it, bro. Like, yeah. yeah. So I, I I don't I don't I don't hold my dad or my mom responsible for the bad shit I did because yeah. I didn't know any different. But at the same time, like, yeah. It would have been cool. Yeah, of course it would have been cool because I remember seeing other parents there and shit, yeah. you know. Um, but I know that my parents were, were, at the end of the day, it was every Friday my mom would take me to McDonald's and every Sunday my dad would take us to Shakey's. And I knew that that was the yeah. thing every week. Yeah. And if that didn't happen, then something was wrong. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> get, them, get them mojos, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Get them mojos. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. So after you got tired of music... Mm. You went into well. You got tired of DJing. I got tired of DJing. Yeah, yeah DJing. Are you just that type of person that you fulfill your, you fulfill what you're set out to do at that moment, and then you're on to the next project because yeah. you're just a go getter. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly who I am. I get bored easily, and comedy has been the comedy has been different for me because I, I, I it's it's it makes me happy. See I, see, I love doing music videos, and I love directing, but I was I was creating other people's dreams and hopes, and I was helping their careers. Mm -hmm. You know, directing and all that, it's, it's, I mean, there's some people that love to direct and love to do that, and yeah, that was, you know, that was cool, and I had a passion for it, dog, and I, and I really did. I had a passion for rapping, I had a passion for, you know, I had a passion for rapping, I had a passion for DJing, and I had a passion for all this stuff, but it wasn't my calling. My calling is to make people laugh. That's what God put me here for. And 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 the fact that I have the passion now to make people laugh is is what's making me grow and be successful at it, you know? Before I used to make people laugh in any setting. I wasn't getting paid to do it. I was making my friends laugh, I was making random people laugh or, you know, coworkers in la chingada. And now I just happen to get paid for it, you know? And 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 you know, I'm but I'm very like that. I get bored easily. I get bored very fast. I've had a thousand jobs, bro. That's why school to me wasn't wasn't it. Cause you know I was a type of student that I wouldn't study and still get a C or a B, because captaba lo que lo que era de volada, way. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I wasn't. Probably, that was fucking. I wasn't. <laughs> and it, to me, it was like this shit's easy, but I, I'm cool. And then I would I would be gone for three days out of school, come back, and I would still get a fucking C or a B. They would they would uh, hold me in at lunch to retake the test. Yeah, because they thought I was cheating. But it's like, bro, I sit in your class. Yeah. All as hour, I fucking analyze everything you're saying. Yeah. Right? And then I'm just like, whatever, fool. Like, I don't, it wasn't challenging enough for me. Yeah. And because nothing I wanted to do required schooling, I didn't, I didn't pay attention to it. Like, I didn't want to be a lawyer. <laughs> was, was, I didn't want to be a <clears throat> rocket science, a scientist, you know, so it, 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 it didn't, it didn't, you know, correlate to me as a person on, on an everyday basis. So did you step, did you have one class of college? Did you step foot into college? Yeah, I took computer science in college, yeah. I did. When and this is when I was still in high school. 
Oh, shit. A- after high school. No, this is during high school. But after I high was, school, you didn't step one foot into the college setting? Nah. The only, the only college setting that I actually took was at the New York Film Academy. Yeah. Shit. And that's when I, you know, I, I actually, in fact, for that one, this is a, like, the, like the only reason I went to the New York Film Academy, and it was funny because I got paid to get educated. Oh, and I'll shit. tell you how. So I was directing my first big music video, right? Can you want me to say the name? Uh yeah well you know at, at the time his name was Black Chill now he goes as McKinley Ave the artist and he had a big record in the nineties you guys are probably too young to remember but <laughs> I was born in ninety nine so born ninety five <laughs> remember she was, oh yeah now the record came out like in ninety three and shit so I was still in the sack too fuck <laughs> and at, and still at this point dog like you know at this point still like I was making three four hundred dollars a music video. And that was, like, I remember this dude called me, and he was like, yo, man, I want you to shoot my video. He, I think he saw my stuff, like, on, I could have been fake, Twitter or Instagram or something around. I don't know. It could have been before. Was, I, I think it was, like, 2011. Though. I think Instagram was, was barely taking off. Nice but YouTube days. was big. YouTube was starting to take off, right, at, at that time. It was still in its infancies of, like, I remember 2009 when I started doing music videos. There was a bunch of videos of just, like, how to. Yeah. It was a bunch of D, you know DIY videos, you know. Yeah, um, that's how people got like really their channels went super up. Is how to and yeah that little how to and that, has that was millions it. of other videos like how to do this yeah how, how to, to build do that this, and I remember that. it wasn't a music video platform. So when I started doing it, people were like, yeah. So where are we gonna put this video? I was like, we're gonna put it on YouTube. YouTube. They're like, what the what fuck the is fuck YouTube? YouTube? Yeah. yeah. They're like, what, what's YouTube? And I was like, oh, but it's, you know, like, trust me, man, it's going to take off. And then slowly but surely, you started seeing artists and different people start, you know, start doing music videos. So I remember, anyway, so, 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 so McKinley Ave hits me up, and he's like, yeah, man, I want you, you know, like, come meet me at, uh, he said, Applebee's, dog. And I was like, word? Applebee's? I was like, oh, this is serious. <laughs> is that the baby I'm back rib one? I swear to God, that's <laughs> the way I was. I was like, oh, shit, okay. And I remember I gave a man. I was like, He's, you know, order whatever you want. And I was like, Ooh. word? Word? Not the, not the, two, like, not the oh, two for word? 20? I was like, nah, there was no three for, there, there, yeah, there was no two for 20 yet. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit, let me get the steak and shrimp. He was like, yeah, it's all good, dog. I was like, hell yeah, you know? Let me, let me get a soda. Yeah, so he opened, you know, like, you know, when you break bread with people, oh. fool, everything's cool. Like, like, my bad, like, whatever you want, fool, you know? I was like, I'll do whatever you want, fool, let's go, you know? I thought, fool, at that point, fool, I remember thinking, I was like, I can't wait to get my, I can't wait to get home and tell my girl, like, we made it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I was like, man, you know, like, this shit was big, you know? And so, um, he was like, yeah, bro, he's like, I have a budget of 10000 fool. And I remember, like, hearing that, fool, and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> ten, 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 like, like, <laughs> like um, that, that's uh, like ten, ten and three more zeros behind like it. Ten G, like in my head, I was like, that's a lot of fucking money. He's like, but I want a dope ass video. And then some other dude, some some <laughs> big ass white boy came in, dog. Uh, his name's Anthony Cook. That's my fucking brother right now, bro. That's that. Like I, I, I owe a lot of my success to him. And so he walks in and he's like. He, hey, he's like, he's going to be your producer. I was like, all right, cool. And I, man, I was like, what's up, Anthony? We're talking. And then you got to think about it, fool. I, I wasn't educated in film, so I didn't know what a producer did. I didn't know there was this, that, whatever, you know? Yeah, you didn't know there was, like, so positions. Th- yeah, I didn't know none of that shit, right? So, you know, we're talking about the video, and we come up with a treatment and everything. I just knew what I wanted. I'm very creative visually. I know what I want, you know? I know how shit should look. I studied film. I used to watch a lot of movies as a kid. And so I knew... Like I, I don't I I remember knowing three point lighting without knowing three point lighting. Yeah, I just mm-hmm. knew that there was a light here, a, a light here, and then splash the back, and then, so I knew how. Like I was like, all these movies have the same lighting. They they do the same shit. There's a method in my head. I was you, like, oh, you, okay, you captured things with without really knowing what. The yeah, fuck yeah, exactly, bro. So, but I, but I just knew the look of it, right? Yeah. So. <clears throat> anyways, we get to the set the day of, right? And it's out here in downtown. It's my first. Big video, bro, like with the crew and a cast and there's 50 extras and I don't know shit about anything. I just knew what I wanted to see. So everybody's standing around and I'm like, and the dude's like, uh, my boy Anthony, he's like, so the crew's waiting for your direction, man. And I was like, mm, okay. I was like, give me a light there, a light here, and give me a light back there. And the dude's like, what kind of lights? <laughs> oh my god! He's like, do you want Tustin? Do you want Fresno? Do you do you want an Ari kit? Do you want a three thousand, a five thousand? I was like, yeah. 
yeah, yeah, for just sure. Just we yeah. that, we yeah, the yeah. fuck out of it. Like, I was like, yeah, everything. No, light it up. Yeah, yeah. Light it up. <laughs> and you could tell the crew was getting frustrated because I didn't know how to communicate. You know, because in the film world, there's a, you know, there's they have their own, there's their terminology, they have their own language, you know, and I didn't know shit. So the dude pulls me to the side. So my boy Anthony Cook pulls me. He's like, "Hey man, let me ask you a question. Like, do you, do you, do you know what we're talking about?" I was like, "I don't." I was like, "I don't." He's like, "Look, man." He's like, "I've seen your videos. I know you can shoot. I know because I've seen your shit." He's all like, "Look, why don't you just tell me what you want, and then I'll I'll communicate it to the crew." I was like, "Perfect, dog. Perfect." So then the whole day it was just me and him, and I'd be on the side. Hey man, this is you know, tell him this, tell him mm, boom, boom. He's all like, Do you want to shoot it in slow motion? I was like, Yeah, shoot this part in slow motion. And then I was directing the actors, and so he was helping me, dog. He was helping me the whole the whole day. So we ended up shooting the music video. I ended up editing the music video. The music video came out dope. And then one day, you know, I I, I think I'm having lunch with my boy Anthony Cook because I'm just trying to pick his brain, you know? And he's like, Hey man, he's all like, he's all like. You know, I'm a I'm an instructor, dude, at the New York Film Academy. He's like, I'm a, you know, I'm I mean, like, I'm a, I'm a cinematography professor. He's all like, do you, do you want to work there? And chances are, you can probably get an education if you want. And I was oh, like, shit. what? He's like, yeah, bro, like I'll get you in there. I'll get you yeah. in there. He's all like, Geez, all you gotta do is take a test. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> that's, like, that's, that's, that's the one thing. He's like, don't worry. He's like, don't worry, dude. I'm a, I'm gonna help you with, you know, like, with the questions, and I'm gonna teach you a little bit of, you know, what, what tungsten, what's, what's, you know, what's daylight, what's, you know, what's this, what's that, all these terminology. I was like, all right, cool. And yeah, sure enough, though, I ended up, I ended up uh, passing the test, and I get hired as a TA instructor, uh, as a, you know, technical assistant, and I, I would just sit in the back of the class, and I was a student. <laughs> And when they would tell me, hey, bring a tripod, I'd be like, all right, cool, bring the tripod. And then I would sit back down and just, I was taking my own notes in the back. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the kids would be like, oh, how do we do this? And I was like, how would you do it? <laughs> how would you do it? <laughs> you you, you, show, you, do it? you show me how you're going to do it. How would you do it? And then you answer we'll a question you know, with a question. <laughs> oh, yeah. The, oh, for the first six months to a year, I was just like, <laughs> you answer the question I was just question. like, look, we're here to learn. <laughs> We're gonna do this together. You know, we're gonna do this together. And I'm gonna uh, act like I'm in your position, and yeah. we'll figure it out together. Oh yeah! And when they would do shit right, I'd be like, "Show me again how you did that. Let me see. <laughs> prove your prove your okay. work. Prove your work." Okay, very good, very good. All it's right. Like when good. you're trying to copy notes, let me see what you got. Oh, yeah, that's, dog. that's a, damn! You know, I got that too, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. And I was there for like three years, and I, and I ended up getting like a master's. <laughs> <education>. <laughs> I was getting paid to get a master's <laughs> education, dog. You know, like talk about how to cheat the system without uh, really cheating the system. Yeah, and and you know, like you know, and and, and a lot of people say, "Oh, que los gringos no ayudan, que la ch Anthony Cook's a white boy from Cincinnati, bro, and he he extended his his hand out to me, and he gave me the best opportunity that I could have ever had, bro. Oh, damn! Shout out to him, man. So shout out to my yes, boy sir, Anthony yes, Cook, sir. bro. Yeah, I, don't think I, was, I was one of those motherfuckers. Nah, what do you mean? No, nah, I wasn't. I wasn't. <laughs> they found me on the Home Depot. No, nah, I used to. I used to work as a plumber. And I used to go to Home Depot and hire those fools to do, like the the Mexicans at Home Depot. Oh yeah, to, to do the right? dirty jobs. Like sometimes we would we would break some pipes and obviously sewer sewage things would come out of the pipes. I didn't want to get in that shit. Yeah. So I'd go to Home Depot. Hey, I'll give you thirty bucks an hour if we just get get trash down there and fix the pipe for me. And I would just tell them what to do. Homeboy do it. Come out all oh, like. Nasty as fuck out of that shit, bro. That's and I'm like, it goes just three hundred dollars for the day. Thank I'm you, gonna, appreciate it. See, yeah, well, pues no, pues está bien, man. As long as you provide it. It's like, I mean, especially at a point like that. I mean, I think we've all been, I think we've all been broke at one point of our life, and yeah, whatever job, whatever job comes up, hey, fuck it. Let's oh go. yeah, I have plenty of those fucking things, yo. So True. one one thing I do want to highlight is when you're you're in film school, you're making out. Did at one point there. Did you ever get lonely being so going, doing all this, uh, filming and stuff like that? Did that road get lonely? Yeah, I traveled a lot. Yeah, like it put a strain on my relationship with my wife. You know, like I missed the birth of my second son. You know, um, I was in Mexico shooting a music video. I was always out. Like I would, I would come home for like, you know, I'd be gone for like fourteen days, be home for three, four days, literally wash clothes, edit, and then I'm back out. You know. So I traveled the world doing that for like eight, nine years, bro. How uh, you can go to Mexico? How is that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That shit? Oh, it's beautiful, dog. <laughs> <I'm bugging laughs> I worked out there for five years, bro. 
Five years? I was going back and forth for five years, bro, to Guadalajara. And then I traveled. Mm. You know, I... I yeah. I, I I hit almost every state in in, in, in Mexico. Like on, at one point on tour with Sekan. Oh shit! And that was cool, bro. Like you know, I went to Mexico City. I I did it, you know, Monterrey, I, I, everywhere, everywhere, bro. Everywhere. Pero a ti no te da cosa estar solo. Nah, I've you know, nah, not really. I mean, yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, you miss, you know, you miss your, you know, you miss your, you know, your girl. You know what I'm saying? Or or if you have a partner, whatever the case, you know. But to me, it. it what happened was that like I had a lot of, like I had a lot of homies that I grew up with doing shit right like yeah but every time they don't like they didn't understand like what I was trying to accomplish and what I'm still trying to accomplish right like a lot of you know a lot of my homies growing up they ended up getting like jobs and you know and which is it's it's all good and dandy dog but so they didn't understand like damn fool you're still out there and I'm like yeah fool and. You know, like they ended up just getting regular jobs, getting married, and and then doing that. Which I did the same thing, but luckily for me, I have a wife that understands the entertainment industry, and she was like, "Just keep going," and she always supported it, bro. She was never against it, you know. Mm -hmm. She grew up in the industry. Her mom grew up in the industry, oh, you know. Okay, okay. Oh, so, like, yeah, dude, like when we got married, you know, immediately we didn't even go. We still haven't been on a honeymoon. She went to China for three weeks to on tour. And then I stayed back, and I was shooting a movie. Like, I was shooting my first movie, actually, at that time. Um, as an actor at this point, you know, because I was, I was acting, and I was still doing the, the acting thing, but it wasn't paying a lot of dividends yet, so I was kind of like, fuck this. I'd rather just direct music videos, you know? And, uh, but yeah, dude, I mean, does it get lonely? Yeah, it does, you know, because people don't get it. People don't get what you're trying to accomplish, bro. Like, when you're on a mission to do something... You have to sacrifice, and I sacrificed the partying with the homies. I sacrificed going to Vegas with the homies. I sacrificed the kicking it, the clubbing, the, the you know. I, I sacrificed it. Like I didn't have like my twenties weren't what other twenty year olds have, which yeah. is the party and the club and the going to Cancun, the doing this and doing that. Like, I didn't have that, bro. I was grinding through my twenties, mm -hmm. you know. So <laughs> that's the sacrifice that I made to be where I'm at now. And they see the sacrifice. They're like, damn, fool, get ching going. We're like, you're making it now. But see, wait, but it took me 15 years. You know, you, a lot of people see like, oh, man, man, dog, like it happened out of nowhere. No, you think it happened out of nowhere. I've been doing this shit since I was 17 years old, dog. Just now you see me. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I may, you know, like, I may be new to you, but I'm not new to the game, bro. Like, <sighs> I've been doing this shit. You know, you're just now following me. You know, you're just now finding out about me. But I've been in this shit, you know. I've been in the trenches, mm -hmm. you know. A lot of people think like, "Oh man, like that's dope, man. Like you get to be with Bash." Like, fool, I used to open up for Bash twelve years ago. You think I just met this dude? <laughs> you think I just met MC Magic? You think I just met Cheekies? You think I just met all these people, bro? I've been fucking with these people before I was con before I was conquered the social media comedian. I've been grinding with them. Yeah. Some people are like, "Oh man, you only reply to the blue checks." Those are my fucking homies, bro. <laughs> All right, let me go buy my blue check real quick. I'm go Those are my homies. <laughs> yeah. The reason I respond to the blue checks because I've been grinding with these people for ten years. You even, think? Would you say you were started? You were, you were grinding with them even before maybe everybody else did. Even even time. before I was grinding for myself. Yeah. See, I was I was doing their music videos. I was doing their tour videos. I was doing their Instagram. I was shooting this shit, shooting that shit. People think that I'm responding to blue checks because they're blue checks. No, these are my fucking homies, dog. But that's the difference. An you know? honest, honestly, an honest question, and I think that's how we are here. Why do you think those relationships with those blue checks uh, flourished? Uh, look, dog. I, I don't. My relationships with these people were were at one point working relationships. Correct. Right. Yeah. They gave me jobs. They gave me the opportunity. They didn't have to give me that. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I put myself in position to get the opportunity. Right. Right? So these relationships, like, eventually, bro, like, with MC Magic, with Baby Bash, you know, with, with you know, like, with Emilio Rivera, like, we've become friends, dog, because they see me grinding, bro. And nunca les he pedido nada, güey. Everything that I've gotten was because I worked for it. Yeah. I've never asked Emilio Rivera for a fucking part in a movie or a TV show. I'm gonna get it when it's my turn to get it, and when 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 I, we know like when the opportunity presents itself, I it's gonna be because I fucking earned it. Mm 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't ask for handouts where everything that I've gotten in this life has been because I fucking earned it. Yeah. You know? If anything, fool, I've done plenty of shit for free for people, though, and I didn't ask for nothing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But these relationships eventually became friendships, bro. Like, uh, you know, during the pandemic, bro, like, or before the pandemic, bro, I wasn't doing so good. Like in 2018, 2019, Baby Bash was like, bring your family to my house, bro. You can, you know, you can live here for now. And, you know, you just, you know, you can just pay half the rent. He's like, I'm back and forth from here in Houston. I don't need this big ass house. And I said, dog, this is a big ass crib. Like I've, I always dr- dreamed of living in Northridge. I live on the east side of the valley. You want me to live on the west side? That's tight. <laughs> that's, a, that's a long way. And he yeah. was like, he believed in me, bro. He believed in my comedy. He believed in what I was trying to get done. And he opened his doors, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I will always be in, in, in like indebted in some way with Bash. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and, and you know, like, you know, with guys like him, you know, you know people that always just open their doors for me, dog, has always, you know, like, I, I'm I'm very thankful to them. And, and for me to stop or for me to do anything, for it'd be, it'd be a dishonor to them to what they have enabled me to get done. You know what exactly, I'm saying? Yeah. That's huge. And especially the part that you said, you never ask for anything. Because I think as a, <clears throat> when you're in, in your purpose and when you're in your grind, doing it yourself and really putting in that work, that, that's a sense of accomplishment mm. on that, how you said earlier, you followed me now, but this shit has been being done for years already. Mm. It just now it got it to your for you page. It just now it landed in your, in your social media realm. Yeah. But I've been doing so much shit behind the scenes that you have no idea. Oh yeah. People, yeah. People still don't know. I, I do. There's shit that I do now that people don't even know. I have my fingerprint on bro. Yeah. There's big ass artists right now. The biggest in the world right now. And I got my fingerprint on it, and I don't post about it. I don't because it it doesn't it doesn't matter. And for one reason is because people don't give a fuck. Pretty much, yeah. People don't care about the certain accomplishments that I've done. You know what they care about? They care about me making them laugh. That's that's what they come to social media for. They come to Concrete Lives page. They come to my page for me to make them laugh. You don't go to Burger King and ask for a Big Mac. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You come to my page to make you laugh. And whenever I push my accomplishments or I do anything that's something different, they're like, all right, cool, but where's the joke? Yeah. Yeah. And I get it, bro. It is what it is. I can't be like, oh, come on, guys. Like everything that I post. No, because it's not like that. I know that they come from me for comedy. And that's what I'm here. You know, that's that's my calling, bro, is to make people laugh. And eventually, bro, yeah, bro, do I want to do serious roles and do I want to do drama and action and all that? Of course, bro, but... For now, this is what I'm doing, and this is what I'm, I'm, I'm here to do now at this moment. You so know? when do you give yourself those flowers of all these accomplishments that you do? You, you can give me flowers when I'm dead, bro. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not asking for pats on the back. You know, like, this is what I love to do, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, you can give me flowers at an award show. You can do that. But, I'm, I'm, you know, like, it's crazy, bro. Like, my cousin Jose, my cousin Pepe, shout out to my cousin Pepe. He's like... How, how come you don't, like, celebrate? Like, how come we don't, you know, like, you know, you just you, you just hosted 17,000 people and you get in the car and you're talking about, like, okay, what's next? Because that's the way it is, bro. <laughs> like, nobody gives a fuck what you did yesterday. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do for me today? And to me, accomplishing new shit every day is what keeps me going. Like, I'm not, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, and it's, and it's very cliche, right? But, like, when, you know, like, it's like me trying to celebrate a game one win when there's three more to win. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I, I still got shit to do. You know, like, yeah, am I happy? But it's like, I have a way. Of course I'm happy, bro. Of course I am. Of course I'm happy. But for me to drive forward and be like this and be like, yeah, that's cool. Look at what I did. Yeah, I'm going to fucking crash, bro. Oh, yeah. I got to keep looking forward, dog. Yeah. You know, it's like I can't, I can't sit there and just keep looking at my rear view mirror. You know what I'm saying? I got to keep this way. Go, go forward. Do you keep that same mentality? Even when you have a shit day? Yeah, I mean... Say, vamos a decir que... Because, I mean, honestamente, I don't think we always have great days. We may have a lot of bad days, yeah. but the good days make That's up why I that do shit. comedy. <laughs> That's why I do comedy, because it makes me feel better. So what it... Is, it, that, is that a way to cope with something? Or well, absolutely, just, yeah, I think we all have our own vices to cope with certain shit that right. we've gone through. Definitely. You, know? you figure that out, or...? Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. So, dog. Yeah, what, yeah. what was that moment that made you that made you really think about life in a sense like that? You were probably yours. Two thousand eighteen, when I lost all my gear, 
I they they stole all my gear from a music video. I was almost done with the music video. It was like the last shot. We parked the truck, and then next thing you know, fifteen minutes later, forty thousand dollars worth of gear is gone. So it left me with nothing, bro. Like you know, I'm crying as a grown man, bro, to my wife. Like, oh, we lost all our fucking gear. Nobody's calling me for music videos no more because I don't have no gear. I went and posted a video on social media. And I even put it in black and white for dramatic effect, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really did, bro. It's still up there. You can scroll, bro. You can scroll and see my growth, bro. I, you you can see it. I have 5,000 posts. Yeah. You, you can see the timeline of my progression on social media. You know how some, some people, they go and delete all their shit before? Yeah, because I, I don't want them to back. see how I was before. You can go back and see that I was at barber school. Yeah. You can go back to see me at New York Film Academy. You can go back to see everything, everything. I'm telling you. I'm not lying, bro. Everything that I've told you today is on my timeline. It's there for you to go back and see and be like, damn, this motherfucker was there. Damn, this motherfucker was in Europe. Damn, he was in South. He was in fucking South America. Damn, he did. The, he, I, I, I did it, bro. I'm, you know, there's no line. The grind is right there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you <laughs> can see the post, you know, but 2018, that was it, bro. It changed my life. And, and I, I had nothing else. I remember being at the Pocos Pero Locos at Beatbox Pro Studios. Shout out to my boy, uh, E-Dub and Kool-Aid. Um, they had given me an opportunity to work out of their office, and in exchange, I would do really affordable videos for them, mm -hmm. right? So I remember sitting at the office for and being like, damn, you know, I, and this just sucks. Like, I don't have nothing more. Like, I don't know what to do. I, I'm, I'm, and, you know, like, I didn't, in a way, I didn't want to start over, bro. Yeah. I didn't um, want to start. I didn't mean like, man, I got to I gotta do videos. Because now I got to go rent gear. I remember I had, I remember they stole all my shit. And in five days, I had to do a Cheeky's video with Cheeky's MC Match, uh, Cheeky's Frankie J and Baby Bash. I had to rent all the gear to get that video. I, I made no money on that video, bro. Because you rented everything else. I had to rent everything. But there I was with a smile on my face. In fact, that's where I met Jay Valentino. And that's where I met Legend at this point. At this point, these guys were, like, big influencers to me. I didn't know who they were. I was just like, oh, man, you guys are big influencers. Cool. Like, yeah. Like, and I didn't, I wasn't doing comedy yet. I was just, I was still going through the process. I was still crying every other day, fool. You know? As a grown man. Um, and then, so I'm sitting at the desk, and I'm like, fuck, what am I going to do? I ended up looking up some videos, and, and I'm looking at these people do reaction videos, and I'm like, Oh, that's funny, but it's not funny. I like I, I can see what you're trying to do, but it's not. But it's, it's but it's not hitting. It's missing yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. It's missing something. Um, so then I decided to do to to, to 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 take upon it myself, and and it worked for me because I brought a different side to it. I was able to splice videos and put myself in videos. And make it look like I was really fucking there because I brought my cinematography and my film knowledge. Like that you do now. That I did for the last 10 years. Yeah. I knew where the lighting, okay? I knew that it's 5 p.m. I got to wait till 5 p.m. to shoot this video. I got to shoot it from this angle, this lighting, detail. I've always, I, I told you, I was, I was a kid, bro. I always paid attention to detail, bro. Yeah. So that's why when you see my videos... And you see these videos that I splice together. That's where it comes from, bro. It's, it comes from me being a kid, me being educated in film and learning yeah. how to do shit, you know? People think I just woke up and started doing these videos. No, bro. Like I said, bro, I've been working at this <laughs> shit, bro. People think that you just woke up and started splicing videos and doing, like, uh, I think I showed my mom yesterday a video of the guy in the, in the red shirt. Oh, shit. And you're about a good dancing. Yeah. And she started <laughs> laughing. I was like, bro, like, you... Now that you're saying all this, is it's like people see this now, but this is something that you've been working on, your gift, your talent, your work ethic that yeah. you've been doing for fucking years. But yeah, basically though, like you, all you're getting is the dish. Yeah, <laughs> you're not in the back seeing the fucking cook burning his hands, exactly. yeah. cutting yeah. his fingers. Yeah, you're not seeing him to sweat. You're not seeing the slip and the falls in the in the in the, in the kitchen, bro. Mm -hmm. All you get is the final dish. And that's so, fine with me. You don't need to know all this shit. And um, going you know? back to 2018, you said when they stole your, yeah. your stuff. Obviously, relying on a partner is very important emotionally. Say what again? Relying on a partner, like you like said, you were you were crying your mm -hmm. to your wife. But sometimes you get trapped in your own thoughts mm -hmm. mentally. How did you manage that? 
Exactly. Because I know it wasn't just emotionally, it was mentally mm-hmm. that you were brought down. Yeah. You know? how, oh, how man, you? I was just crying. There was nothing else to do. But You didn't just, write any comic to... Didn't what? Any, any comedy to, to try to... Everything that I did after that was to get myself out of that hole, out of the depression, bro. Because mm-hmm. I was depressed as a man. And when you're depressed as a man and you got kids, you know, how do you go home and tell your wife I'm depressed? Yeah. Not only that, but how do you tell you, you know, how do you go home as a Mexican dude? Because, you know, like being Mexican and, you know, being Mexican-American, you know, and coming from a culture where you can't show that you're sad or where you can't show that something's bugging you or que te molesta or that I'm mentally hurt, you know, like they don't, we don't, we don't, we're not there yet. We're, we're, yeah. we're starting to understand that it's okay to be emotional, that it's okay to not be all there and to say, I'm, I need help. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I figured, I think I never saw my dad ask for help. I never yeah. saw my dad cry. Yeah. I never saw my dad go through the struggles. Obviously he was hiding it. Yeah. And well, we you don't know, see that part. And I think the difference is that our parents, you right? Like, you know, the, you know, the past generations, they don't know how to express it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember when my boy Roy, right. You know, my boy Roy, when he passed away in 2008, this is when I was rapping my boy Roy, his dad, you know, they grew up in American culture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So to them, saying I love you was normal to them. And I used to look at them and I used to be like, oh, wow. shit, his dad just told him he loved him and he kissed him. And I'd be mm-hmm. like, but that's American culture, bro. So he grew up in an American environment, like like American culture. So when I would hear his dad tell him I love him, he'd be like, that's dope. I want that. Yeah. And when I would go try to do it with my dad, he'd be like, ¿Qué quieres? <laughs> he's like, ¿Qué traes hoy o qué? ¿Qué traes? ¿Qué quieres? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, or like my dad telling me he loved me was a pat on the back. But that's how I knew he loved me. Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't blame my dad for it because I'm sure my grandpa never told my dad. He didn't grow up with that, bro. Exactly. So you can't blame someone for not having something that they weren't taught, right? This is where we come in as... Men now that we understand, like, hey, our boys, especially our boys, they need to hear that from from their dads, bro. Not just your little girl. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And so, you know, we you gotta break those generational, you know, generational curses or those, or those generational vices that we have as men. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's like it's necessary, bro. You know, like I, I do with my sons now. I tell my sons I love them every day. Though I probably say it too much. They're probably like, ah, yeah, wait. You <laughs> yeah, know? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, <laughs> you know, but Stop but it. but I do. You know, like mm-hmm. it's just it's, you know that's just what you need to do, bro. You know. I've, so now that now that you're a dad, and now that you you see. You see life in a different, in a different vision, right? In a different set of eyes. Now it's like, oh shit! Looking back, taking a step back, and you're like, oh fuck! All this has happened, and I understand why it happened. I understand yeah. why this happened. Like, are you able to have these type of conversations with your parents now? I've had, yeah, I've had, yeah, I've had. Oh yeah, we've, yeah. I mean, of course. I mean, you know, I mean, we've had family discussions, and I mean, I've told my dad like. You know, like, my dad now, because like, I even did a skit where I tell my dad I love him. And I'm like, Dad, tell me you love me. He's like, ¿Por qué? Okay. <laughs> and he ends up saying it in the skit. I posted this skit, like, three, four years ago. I should probably post it again. But he knows that now. He knows that I want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's still difficult, again, but because he's just not used to it. And it's so different to hear, like, te amo. Yeah, yeah. In Spanish. Especially, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just weird. You know what I'm saying? Like, Especially from, from man to man. You yeah, know, from you're man like, to man. Te amo, papa. Yeah, like, like, it's just uh, different. You know, te quiero, mijo. You know, yeah, te quiero. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's a little different. You know, like you can say I love you in English, and it doesn't sound weird. But once you start saying it in Spanish, it just, nice. you know. Yeah. So, you know, but there's things that my dad does. That I know, bro. Like, you know, I you know your dad loves you, dog. Yeah. It, they just have a different way of showing it, you know? Because they grew up in an era where they, they, they didn't get shown that. Where 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 it was different to show you yeah. know how you know how our parents you know how our grandparents show our parents love? Is that there's food on the fucking table. Yeah. And I didn't leave. <laughs> yeah, no, pretty yeah. much that, that, yeah. That, did you yeah, have a place to sleep? Yeah. yeah. Did you have food on the table? Yeah. Yeah. That's it, bro. Mm-hmm. Their love was there's food on the table, and I was a present father. I never left you. That's the way of saying I love you. Yeah. And Mexican parents have never saw for a, a pat on the back or nothing because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to feed and provide for your family. 
You know what I'm saying? We don't yeah. look for pats on the back. Real Mexican <laughs> men don't look for pats on the back for something they're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when we show love to our parents, they're just like, that's why they're all like chiviados. Ay, no, pues gracias, you know? No, no, pues gracias. <laughs> because they don't, they, don't, they don't expect it, bro. Because yeah. they, they don't know that. They don't know how to react. They don't know how to react it, to you know? something that they didn't expect. Exactly. And the yeah. reason they don't expect it is because they don't feel that it's necessary. Yeah. That is their job as a father to that's their they normal it's, 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 like it's, anything, it's, it's second like any, nature to them it's you know? like anything else when you go so um, you go so much without something then it's normal to you I could do it ever and I heard it uh, I was watching a video and it's like people think that this persona that I am now was just from now it's like no I grew up with no applause I grew up with nobody there I grew mm -hmm. up with just supporting myself so the person that you get now was because I built it from then, so what yeah. I'm trying to say is, our parents, why are they this harsh or why are they this heartless? It's because they had to grow up that same way in order oh, to yeah. progress. And it's just a different generation now. Yeah, like, you know, definitely. We're, kids like, ain't getting, you know, we're not, we don't have fucking tween marriages now as much as before, you know? Yeah. Like, we don't have 17 and 18-year-olds getting married and starting fucking full-on family. It's not how it used to not be, you know? Eight, seven, eight to nine kids Eight to nine time. kids. It's, it's different now, you know? Mm, yeah. So, so, you know, again, man, all this is going to change with time, and I think, you know, I think this generation, my generation, I believe, you know, at least in, in, in the States, is starting to change a little bit, you know? But... Like he said, I guess it starts with us. It starts, it starts with us at the end of the day. It starts you know, with though. us having the conversation, bringing it up to light. And is it uncomfortable? Yes. But we're trying to make the uncomfortable conversations yeah. comfortable. Yeah. And as tough as it is, and that's, I mean, again, we go back to our name, It's Also Light Podcast. Because cuando andas pedo, you start talking about, si, I don't know, it's just kidding. It's, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. it's like, hey, can we do that same thing, but just be sober and actually have a conversation? Yeah. Well, you no, know? because it's embarrassing. You know, and Mexicans yeah. don't like to be embarrassed. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's not me, fool. <laughs> That's not me right there, dog. <laughs> That's not me right there. Look, 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 look at that. That's not me, dog. That's not me. <laughs> oh, I wish we had Man, a we third. We got a person in for today. Um, but Dylan brought this up earlier about mm. your partner. Mm. Is there something that your wife did for you personally, mentally, emotionally that she just may not know? That you've never communicated this with her, or nah, we we communicate a lot. Me and my wife communicate like like we talk like before we are husband and wife. Like that's my homegirl, bro. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Like that's like like that's my best friend. You know when what I'm exactly saying? did you meet her? Um, I actually met her. Um, uh, I was her, her cousin used to be like my backup dancer. So then he he had a, a a birthday party. He's like, come perform at my birthday party, because me and him used to do a bunch of shows and all. Yeah. And he and he's he's a well accomplished you know pop locker break dancer, bro. Like well accomplished, you know. Yeah. He's done amazing things in his in, in his career. So I performed at his birthday party, and she came up to the stage and she snapped a couple pictures, and I was like, yo, who's that? What's up? Yeah, homeboy, homeboy was behind the scenes like, you know what I'm like, saying? I'm here to do a show, but yeah, and I'm rocking, bro. I'm rocking the shit, you know. Like I'm doing my show, and I see her come up, and she's taking pictures of her because her cousin on stage with me, and I saw her, and I was like, yo, who's the wedita right there, Pedro? What's up? What's going on? Like, te va a cobrar, chiquita. <laughs> And, you know, come to find out, she's a singer. She was touring. You know, she used to do her thing, you know. And um, I remember m her, my my boy's brother was like, yeah, man, you guys should do a record. I was like, yep, we should. We, we definitely should. Hell we yeah. We definitely <laughs> should. And I remember I hit her up on MySpace. I was like, hey, man, it'd be dope if you did a song with me. Joey told me that you sing. And she was like, yeah, let's do a song. And then she came to the, st I, I booked the studio. And then after that, it was like, Oh, he's like, <laughs> what's that? I, remember, it was in the back I, I remember, I remember, like, I think at that time, food, like, it was dope. Like, 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 Ottinger shirts were big. I, remember, like, <laughs> fucking, I came off fucking Ottinger out, boo. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, boy, I've never dressed up for any studio session. Fu, that oh, way off. I came like a peacock. <laughs> Fucking, I came in like a fucking peacock. Chest up, it all the way. Chest up, it Just like, what's up, you know? I came what's in. the initial conversation then when you shoot your shot? Oh, nothing. It was just music shit, you know? And I think I remember I was like, oh, I like I like the color on your toenails. She was like, oh, thanks. Well, you were looking at the toenails? What yeah. the fuck? Oh, yeah, because I don't like girls with ugly toes. <laughs> and she was wearing like open toe shoes, and I was like, 
oh, you got nice feet and shit, you know? <laughs> I swear to God, you, that's the true story, bro. She, I'm not lying. You can ask. Yeah. He's over here dedicating MC Magic songs to her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Something about, about those you, toes. Baby. Baby. <laughs> nah, but it was real. Th- and then I remember, like, I remember, I remember she, uh, I remember I was already like, yeah, so what's up? Like, we need to get together. And she was like, yeah, call me up. And then I remember, like, two days later, I called her. And I want. I was like, hey, we should go out to dinner. And then the worst thing, she was like, I want to be in Tecate for the next two weeks. I was like, oh, fuck. And it's like, for two weeks, I was like, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? <laughs> and it was, a, you know, after that, man, we just started dating, bro. Like, I remember the first time I went to her house, bro, I, I, I used to smoke hella weed. I mean, I still smoke weed, but... <laughs> Not before it no, was no, like, no, not that way. No, before, no, 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 I used to smoke hella weed, and I didn't know nothing about her family. I was still ready getting to know her. Yeah, and so I, she was like, "Yeah, come to the family barbecue," and I was like, "Fuck yeah, dog! Fuck, <laughs> fuck dog. yeah, go!" So I'm fucking driving, dog, from the valley all the way to Long Beach because she's, a, you know, she's a Long Beach girl. Oh shit. And then so I get to Long Beach when I'm big chief, you know, I'm smoking blunt food. I get off, I smell like weed. And I and I didn't know, dog. So I walk in and her and her mom's like, she looks at me and she was like, Te sientes bien? And I was like, Oh, I feel fantastic. I was like, I feel because she's sitting there, she's like, Oh, you, you feel good? And I was like, I feel fantastic. I know I'm, I'm Christian. Oh, good to meet you. And then shit. she and then she comes in and she's like, I'm just gonna pray for you now. <laughs> Before you enter my home, her, her fuck friends up. started praying for me. Come to find out, her parents are pastors of a mega church. Oh, oh fuck! And she was like, "I'm just gonna pray for you right now, Lord." Just you know, and she started going. I was like, "Did, you, did you at least shower <laughs> in acts?" Oh, and you gotta think about. I'm car? high. I'm hungry for. I can smell the barbecue for. And I'm like, "Come on, how long is this gonna go for right now?" I get it. I'm saved already. Yes, let's go. You know, <laughs> like, let's go. Yes, I love the Lord. <laughs> I get it, you know. I'm not a bad guy, you know. Like I just smoke weed. And then she's doing it, and then her friends coming down, and she and she had, she started laying hands on me. Let's pray for the gentleman right now. And now I got six hands on me, food like this one. I'm like, yo, I don't even know these people, dog. I don't even know these people, and they're praying for me, dog. And you over here, eyes low. And Thank I'm you. faded, dog. My stomach is like growling. I'm like, oh, I'm so hungry. And you could, and I look up, and I see her like this. She was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> And I was like, I bet. And then, you know, they finished and we go. She's like, you're hungry. I was like, yes, I am. And honestly, <laughs> food, at that time, at the time when that happened, my my best friend had just passed away, you know? So they were godsend, bro. They were godsend for me. They mm-hmm. they they helped me really get through a lot, you know what I'm saying? So it, it was just perfect timing, dog, for everything, they, you know? They saved you. It was. It was, bro. I, I started going to church and shit, dog. You know? so, shit, I, did, I was not supposed to be doing Yeah, I started going to church, you know? El compa didn't está cagando, so está bien. Comedy, bro. Right now, it's how we just said it right now. It's one of the things that it's, if it's not trending, it's the fucking wave right now. It's something that's blowing up with all the comedians, the yeah. young ones, the ones that have been in the game for, for a while now. And mm-hmm. for the people that don't know, how long ago did you start doing stand-up comedy? I started doing stand-up comedy like 15 months ago, though, like a year and three months or a year and four months ago. Fuck. And I, didn't, I was a firm believer. I was like, I don't want to do stand-up comedy. I want to be... And I want to be a comedic actor, which is a big difference, right? Like, yeah. it's, a, it's a big difference between being a comedic actor to being a stand-up comedian, right? It's 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 a different art. And I was I was very like, fuck that, I don't want to do that. I just I just want to do that. And people kept telling me like, no, bro, do stand-up, bro. Trust me, it's gonna open doors for you. You're gonna do yeah. better. And you gotta get out there if you really want to be a comedian. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. you you gotta you, you gotta go out there and, and and do that because if not, fool, like. The acceptance is not going to be there in a way, right? Yeah. So then the first opportunity that I got to do stand-up, and I was kind of mad about it because they kind of threw me in. It was, <laughs> it was my people from Project Hope. They were doing an event out in uh, in Vegas. Yeah. And um, they were like, yeah, you know, you're going to go up there. You're going to do 15 minutes. And I was like, dude, I don't even have 15 minutes. So this was just going to be off the top of your head? Well, I had wrote some stuff, but... 
again, dude, like stand up comedy is it's its own art, bro, and it's yeah. something you gotta respect and you gotta respect the craft, you know. It's not something that you could just no, walk no, up like, like you can, you could you could be funny, mm-hmm. but in order to be in front of in front of people, well, yeah, because now you gotta make like now you gotta make people laugh with subjects and and and, and context and, yeah. and all that stuff, right? I've been doing sketch comedy. I remember, like, my first skits that I ever did were, like, in 2009, and they were on YouTube, you know? And so it, so it was different, right? So I, I remember I, I, I wrote some stuff, and, yeah, it's Vegas, bro. I'm in Vegas, my first time on stage. Yeah. And I got Andy, 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 Andy Ruiz is there, the boxer. Oh, I, shit. Esta, um, the Gypsy King. Oh, shit. Fernando Vargas. And there's all these famous you, people You here. have people there. I have people there, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm doing my thing, and it's like crickets, fool. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm fucking dying up there. No, <laughs> dying. And then I had this one joke about, like, this person in a wheelchair, fool. That and fucked it up. And I didn't notice, fool, there was a lady in a wheelchair. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you can do jokes like that, right? Yeah. Back, I, back I then, you could, you could you, do jokes like that. No, like no, that. no, no. Even now. Like, even now. I, you can do it, but it I, wasn't a are, good joke. Okay. Uh, it was what, shitty. What was it? I mean, repeat, repeat it. What was the no, joke? I, dude, honestly, I forgot what the joke <laughs> was, but because I, I never said it again. I was like, never mind. <laughs> so, and I remember, fool, like, she looked at me and she was like... <laughs> <laughs> 20 seconds to turn around. She rolled away, dog. <laughs> and then people started getting up, fool, and walking away. And I'm like, fuck, I'm drowning up here, dog. Uh, and then my and then I was getting a couple laughs here and there, you know, but it was like people that knew me that knew like you're the guy from social media. Yeah. So I was getting petty laughs, you know? <laughs> but I, I, at the same time, like, I kind of felt that I was doing bad, but I I I, I was I was like, ah, I did pretty good. Yeah. It's, it's, it's not too bad, right? It wasn't until I got off the stage that people started telling me stuff, and that's and I started like, "What do you mean?" They were like, "Hey, man, you win some, you lose some," and I was like, "What? What the fuck?" <laughs> like, I, didn't know I, lost. I, thought I, I thought I did pretty good, <laughs> and then you know people just kept saying shit like, "Don't worry, man, you get back up on that horse," you know? I'm like, "What horse? I thought I did pretty good," <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then my wife was like, "It's okay, babe. You know, we're just gonna have fun. It's Vegas," and I was like, "What the fuck are you guys talking about?" <laughs> You know, and then so like she kept it really real. She's like, ah, you kind of sucked, you know, like it sucked. You're still funny. If your babe, partner bro. doesn't tell you the real shit, she you know, she's like, she's like it kind of sucked, you know. And I was like, all right, cool, fuck it. So I went, I went back to the drawing board, and I started, and I started really, really going. Like I started going to comedy clubs and really writing shit. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this shit because I, anything I fell at, bro, I'm, I'm very like. I gotta get better. I'm very prideful, dog. E e e way, and I'm like, ah, see, okay. Even right. no, 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 yeah, fool. Like, it, like, it fuels me, bro. Like, you know, like, it fuels me. Like, when I have a bad skit, fool, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna have three bangers right now. I'm gonna write three bangers, you know? And that's how I motivate myself, you know? Yeah. So I remember I started writing comedy and I started really doing it. And then one of my, my boy, Jerry Garcia, which is, you know, he's huge. He has HBO stuff and yeah. you know, all kinds of shit, Netflix. He said, hey, man, come and do a show with me at a. At, at Levity Live in Oxnard. He said, just host it. Don't, you know, you don't have to feel like you have to do a set. And I was like, all right, I'll come out. He said, you could do five minutes in the beginning, five minutes here, five minutes there, and, you know, in between all the acts. I was like, all right, cool. Well, I ended up doing the cardinal sin of doing a new joke starting. You, you like, you don't do that. You, you start with stuff that wor- already works, yeah. mm-hmm. and then you throw in the new stuff. And if it doesn't work, you can always go back to the stuff that does work. But I was all cocky. I was writing a fucking joke on the way there, and I was like, "Ooh, this one's gonna hit." Feel <laughs> big eyes. This one's gonna hit, and I get there and I do the joke, dog. And some dude is right there, and like, man, man like front, like second row. He was like, "Is this supposed to be fucking funny?" And you gotta think about it, fool. It, I'm not like nobody's laughing at my shit, right? So I think like the fucking cook in the back heard it, fool. Like, like, <laughs> everybody heard this motherfucker say that. Like this is supposed to be. And what happens when one fool complains? Everybody. Everyone starts complaining. And then some fool was like, "That's what I said." And then yeah, get them all. And it was like, and it just started. I was like, "What the fuck?" And then because I've hosted so many concerts, I went into my concert mode. If you're having a good time tonight, make some noise. And then people were like, woo. You know, Where are my ladies at? Woo. You know what I'm saying? So then I got them back. I got them back, you know. 
And then I was like, coming up next to the stage, we got your boy. Boom, boom, boom. And, I, and I brought out the guy and I went to the back and he was like, are you okay? I was like, no, <laughs> I'm fucking dying. Jerry's like, don't worry. I don't know what you did there. Why did you start doing new shit? And I was like, I don't know if I was overconfident. He's like, when you go back out there, go back to the shit we talked about. You got this. And I was like, all right. So I went back out there when I started, you know, I started doing my shit and I started killing it. Just mm -hmm. people started laughing. And by the end of the night, the people were on my side again. <laughs> and so just those little things of bombing, dude, just taught me so much, you know. And it's yeah. been a year and 15. It's been a year and 15. I started from, I started just being a host, bro, to headlining my own shows now and selling out in a year and three, four months, you know. So it's changed. Pero como dice Jerry, como dice Jesus, when you got it, fool, you got it. And that's what they tell me, you know. But again, I'm still working on my shit. Yeah. I'm still being humble. I'm still, I love the craft. And I've, I've fallen in love with the craft more now than ever, <clears throat> dog. Like, so, what, so what does this mean to you now that you're getting, you're getting the recognition, but also you're, you're living, how you said, you're living your purpose of making people laugh. How does that make, outside of what people see? Right before you go on stage, before you walk up on stage, before you even get to the arena, or right when you're in, in the back, what what is that? What do you tell yourself? What's that pep talk? What what do you feel that? I'm still would... nervous. I'm still nervous. Like I was nervous before getting into this podcast. I'm still nervous. You didn't see thing. homeboy sweat before getting to the yeah. homeboy was fucking sweating his ass off. Hell yeah, I got yeah. It. that's why we took shots prior to this. Yeah, nah. Fun. Like I still get nervous, bro. Like you know, there's there's no pep talk. I think. To me, it's just more like, lo que pase, pasa, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, whatever's going to happen, va pasar y pues, you know, you, you know, you go out there and you do your material, you know, yeah. and, 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 and you hope that people understand it and that people want to laugh, you know. But what helps me is that I come from a background of people being fans on me through social media, so it definitely does help me, and they already know me, right? So... Like, for example, I had one girl, right? Like, it was, I think, uh, I, I just did the Ontario Improv, right? And it was a great crowd, sold-out crowd, me and Jerry, uh, Christian Saragosa. So we're doing this show, and at the end, this girl comes up to me. She's like, yo, man, you did really good. And I, she was like, whew, I almost didn't come. And I was like, why? She was like, well, it's because you're a social media guy. And I was like, what? She's like, yeah, usually, usually social media guys aren't funny on stage, but, like, I'm glad I came because... Like you actually did your job, and I was like, "Wow!" Like I didn't, like I didn't see that, you know. I, you know what I'm saying? But, um, thank so you. it's like you still like I still try to go up there, and I'm still trying to win you over, regardless whether you know me from social media or whether you like my the peak skit or whether you like this skit or that skit. Yeah. I still have to do my job when I get on the stage, you know. Like I still have to make you laugh, you know. And it's and it's hard because when I do social media skits, I can do a skit and put my phone down and. Walk away from it. I don't got to hear the booze. I don't got to read the comments. I yeah. can just put it away and hopefully it goes good, you know? Yeah. And, and, and and when you're on stage, you can't just get off. I mean, you can run off, but how bad is that going to look? Yeah. You got to take the heat, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, that's the difference between social media and stand-up comedians is that stand-up comedians take the heat right there in the moment. Social media people, we can put our phone away and we could just delete the we, we, we can delete the skit if it didn't work <laughs> out, you know? I think a, uh, on a real question, honest question, and are you ever scared of the things that you say on stage or on social media? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the way he laughs. <laughs> See, like, like the other day, fool, I made some shit up about Tupac and people went crazy, fool. I just made it up, fool, and the next thing you know, I made it to the full to the full community page. <laughs> I posted that Mexicans did that did the oh. star, and I don't know, fool. I just said that shit, fool, and people went crazy over it, dog. I, I don't know, people. That's the whole thing. Is that look? If you want to just say some inflammatory shit, fool, and people are gonna go crazy. Yeah. You know, it's like this, bro. I you know three days before, I went and fed sixty kids at the school. I had promised them pizza, a pizza party before the school year ended, and I went to go do it. The kids were happy, bro. Some kids, some kids don't, some kids don't get that at home, and I was mm -hmm. able to tell which kids don't get that love at home. Yeah, and you could see it, bro, in their eyes. That same day, I went and spoke to 400 graduating students. Sheesh. The food community didn't post that. Nobody posted that. They posted the inflammatory comment that said Mexicans laid Tupac star, 
which created a divide between black and brown on that on, mm-hmm. on the comments. That's a narrative. See, I could say something inflammatory, and it'll get posted, but they didn't post the shit that I did for the kids because yeah. it doesn't because it because it's because it's not controversial. Social media, it is what it is, bro, and you gotta take you gotta take what comes with it, right? Mm-hmm. So I knew. When I posted that Tupac shit, that I was gonna get some heat for it, mm-hmm. but I knew, and I was like, "Let's see what happens." Next thing you know, forty-eight hours later, I'm on the food community. The food community has never posted me before, wow. but when I said something inflammatory, it went up on the page. Yeah. And next thing you know, I'm getting like, "Oh, you're lame." Oh, this, or some, some people agree with me. Some people, I made it up. I don't know. I don't know who yeah. fucking did that, but I just figured like. I'm gonna say some shit that's gonna, and then let's see, let's see what happens, and that's what happened. What would, what would you say has been your greatest accomplishment that maybe no one knows? That maybe no one knows in life. Uh, I, feeding my family every day. I think I think that's what we all work for. There's nothing else that we do. You try to go a week without eating, see what happens. That's what we all work for. At the ultimately, bro. Ultimately, at the end of the day, no matter what it is, you don't you don't have to have a car. You don't need to have a watch. You don't need to have Jordans. You don't need to have none of this. You don't need to go to the movies. You don't need to go to a game. You don't need. You don't need to, that doesn't matter, bro. Yeah. Try not to eat for seven days and see what happens. At the end of the day, right? Even Jesus had a supper, the Last Supper, right? We all need to break bread, but at the end of the yeah. day, that's what matters, bro. Yeah. Right? You 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 can't have a party without feeding people. Mm-hmm. Right? I can't tell you happy birthday without fucking blowing out candles on a cake. We all need to eat. At the end of the day, if we're just feeding my family, eso es lo que más me importa. Ya lo demás, güey, está chido, güey. Ya lo demás es extra. Que estoy en este juego, que estoy aquí, que estoy con este, que me tomé fotos con este. Todo eso vale verga, güey. Doesn't matter, fool. What matters is that I'm able to feed my son and, my, and you know, my boys and my wife at the end of the day. That's it, fool. That's my greatest accomplishment. The rest of the shit, food, that's just icing on the cake, fool. Yeah. That's just the icing on the cake. It doesn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, like th- if everything else fails, this is what matters. Yeah, no matter I'm not going to be able to take Jordans with me. Like, when I die, it doesn't matter. None of that matters, bro. But, what you know, what, what I can take is knowing that I left my kids money to eat when I'm not here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> at the end of the day, like I said, we try not to eat. Even a fucking vegan, even a fitness guy. I don't care how much you work out. You got to eat. You got to yeah, eat. Pretty much. You got to eat. There's yeah, definitely it's for all of us right there. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Because like, I'd have 2,000 calories today, bro. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Is having your first son, mm. how old are you? Uh, I was 25. 26. What, what changed within you when you had your first son? Mm, well... I don't, you know, like, I vote, and I hate to say it like this because it sounds, like, weird, but I've always had the same motor. Mm. Like, I remember when I was 16, I was like, I'm going to have a song on the radio by the age of 20. I did it at 21. I've always had the motor. Did it elevate my grind? Absolutely, dog. It elevated my grind to a whole other level, but I've always had the same motor, you know? Yeah. I think what, I think the only thing that changed was that, I wasn't just doing shit for myself no more. I was doing shit for my kids. I was doing stuff for my wife. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, my wife comes before my kids because without my wife, I can't, like, you know, my wife is, bef- my wife comes before my kids in a way. Why I got to take care of her in order for her to take care of my kids. You see what I'm saying? I like that. I like that. Wow. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't, ha- like, she's my partner, bro. <laughs> if I don't take care of my wife, she can't raise my kids. See, we homeschool our kids. She is a teacher. She is a, a, a chef at the house. She is she she cleans the house. If I don't take care of my wife, she can't take care of my children. So she comes first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Ultimately, we do shit for our kids. That's what I mean. That's what we're doing it for. But I gotta make sure that she's taken care of before she can take care of other things. You know, mm-hmm. you can't. You know, you can't do it the other way. You know, you can't. You, you can't. You know what I'm saying? You can't fix your radio before you put gas in your car, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So that's 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 how I live. You know what I'm saying? That's my model. You know? Some people might be like, "Oh, wow, his kids come before." Yeah, that's the way I live. You know? And then, and everybody's entitled to it. Everybody has their own way of living. Yeah. The problem with how 
the scenery that we're all in mm. is that you just get judged for the way you live it. And I actually said this the other day to my mom. It's like, it sucks because you get judged for the, you get criticized for the things you don't, you get judged for the things you, you don't do. And then you get criticized for how you do things. Yeah. So it's just, no matter what way, however you live it, however you fucking La gente va a decir it. algo, güey. La gente yeah. va a decir algo. No, no matter how you do it, güey. Like, la gente siempre va a decir algo, güey. There's always going to be... You know, siempre va a decir, ah, güey, que no más, que esto, que, oh, you're a social media community. ¿Y qué tiene, güey? Porque lo haces bien, porque lo haces ah, mal. Ah, tienes trabajo, güey. No, ¿Y qué tiene, güey? Oh, oh, yeah. No, no. ¿Y qué tiene? ¿Y qué tiene, güey? O sea, oh, oh, yeah, but you do this shit, or, or you got this on social media, o no más, ¿y qué tiene, güey? ¿Y qué tiene, güey? Yeah. O sea, no, you're not paying for a subscription, fool. Mm -hmm. You know, people always comment, oh, oh, man, this ain't it. Send me the receipt for and I'll send you a full fucking refund. <laughs> Sí, así es. Sí, así es, güey. O sea, and, and you know? I think that the the scarier part for them is they don't think that you will respond back when they question you. No, y la cosa es, güey, es que últimamente, güey, la la cosa es que, o sea, yo lo hago porque me nace hacer videos, güey. Yeah. No mm -hmm. porque te debo el, el video, güey. No te lo debo. Yo lo hago porque me gusta and I like to make people laugh. Ahora, si no te cae, ya está bien, güey. O sea, yo no voy a un restaurante si no me gusta la comida, güey. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. ¿Te imaginas yendo a un restaurante y comiendo y pinche comida bien mala? <laughs> y tú te la comes, güey. Hey, you keep going. <laughs> you keep going to the restaurant. Well, that's how it is. Hey, you finish it. Nada más te quiero avisar que no me gustó nada de la comida. No me gustó nada. Pero, no, pero no. mañana, pero I'll be here tomorrow. Pa chingar, pa, no pa me cobre, pero me cabe todo. <laughs> pinche para otra pa vez. Para cagar para otra vez. And that's people on social media. For, you know, people mm -hmm. will still follow you, talk shit, and they'll still follow you. How that psyche works, I don't I know. I have no fucking idea. But ultimately, fool, it keeps my algorithm going. So keep commenting. <laughs> no, just hey, so positive. Our publicity is good publicity. You know, mm -hmm. full community. Thank you. Yeah, no, <laughs> dude, I love the full community, bro. Like, dog, they put a lot of people on. Yeah. I'm just saying that. Yeah. You know, then you know they didn't post me feeding the kids. Then you know they don't post my community. You think work. it's it's like an expectation? Like, oh, you're an influencer. You're this. You're you're expected to do. No, this. I think to. nah. I think the food community is 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 is, is, is set to do. A, no, not a just story. them, but like in general. Not oh, no, just them, no, but in, in general. general. Oh, yeah, no. like obviously they don't publish that or they don't put that on on social media because they're like, yeah. oh, you're expected to do that. It's because I believe there, there are certain pages that are made for clicks. They're not meant to post motivational shit. They're not meant nah, to. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like, again, dog. I'm not gonna go and watch, say, uh, you know. Jose Luis and Censura food expecting life changing advice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, it is, it, 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 it's there for what it is. Operation Ooh, Repo. You know, like, <laughs> Operation Repo. Yeah, like, you know, I'm not going to watch Operation Repo on how to pay a car note. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to watch shit for what it's worth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and that's what it is. And people sometimes yeah. are like, oh, oh this. it's like, dude, that's what it's meant for, dude. You know? Relax, you know? It's just people, people nowadays are just too sensitive to just opinions, bro. Like, yeah. si, si tú te sientes así, yeah. está bien, güey. Sí. That's on you. Mm -hmm. Hey, pero don't bring that shit over here. Absolutely. Si, si yeah. te peleaste con tu esposa anteriormente, pues que se sí, quede allá, güey. güey you know, no mames. Like, you just, you just got to do you and just, you know, to the people that follow people on social media, like, just don't take it too seriously. It's just, it's, it's, it's okay, dude. Like, you know, like, who cares? Like, just have fun. Social media is, just, it's what it's for. Obviously, there's people that get their news from social media, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I personally don't turn on, I don't turn on the TV for news. I don't turn on the TV for, I don't, I, I just don't, like, wait, a mí que vergas me importa, güey, lo que está pasando allá, güey. You know what I'm saying? Like, respectfully. Respectfully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Respectfully, fool. Like, yeah. o sea, a mí que me importa que no estén prendidas luces next door. I gotta make sure that my kids can see in the fucking house, bro. You know, Pretty much, house, yeah. You know? Pretty yeah. much, yeah, yeah. Obviamente, wey, like, yeah, you want your community to be good, but then do your part, fool. Don't throw trash in your own community. Make sure that it's clean. Do your part. Mm -hmm. Pero así de que me importe otra gente, o sea, de que me importe todo el mundo, wey, pues no puedo ayudar a todo el mundo, wey. Mm -hmm. I can't make everybody happy. I can't make everybody laugh. I'm not expecting to everybody to be like, he's the funniest ever. Like, I... That's not what I'm here for. I'm here to make the people that want to come see me laugh, que vengan. Y los que no, pues está bien, güey. Ahí para todos, güey. Look, look at Coca-Cola, fool. Now everybody likes Coca-Cola. So you know what they said? But let's, maybe let's make Sprite. And then there's people that don't like Sprite. Cool, then let's make Dr. Pepper. 
It's because that way they can make it for everybody. Guess mm -hmm. what? I'm not Coca Cola, fool. I'm not gonna make it for everybody, fool. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. You're spray, fool. I'm going to nah, do nah, what nah, I sí. can, fool, you know? <laughs> it's just like, yeah. Por eso hay un chingo de comediante, güey, para que a lo que te ruge chencha, güey, you know, whatever you feel is funny for you, fool, yeah. está bien, güey, you know? I can't expect everybody to love me, yeah. fool. That's that's a unrealistic expectation, you do know? Do you expect yeah. love in return, fool? Hmm? Do you expect love in return? <laughs> yeah, why not? You know? Nah, I don't expect nothing. I used to expect it, you know? I used to, I used to be like, Because comedians, right, as comedians or as content creators, we're people pleasers, mm -hmm. right? We want to create content that everybody likes. We're generally, almost, we're people pleasers. We're trying to make everybody laugh, trying to make everybody like us. But it comes to a point where it becomes stressful and we become, no cerramos. We're like, oh, I, I need to step away from this because it's not going my way. And the reason that happens is because you're expecting too much from yourself. Mm -hmm. Just chill. Lay back. Do what you can. You can't make everybody happy. Yeah. You know? And that's it, bro. You know? In in your terms, can you describe what happiness is? What? Can can you describe what happiness is? What happiness is? Yeah. What well, does happiness I mean, means to you? What happiness means to me? Yeah. Happiness is waking up in the morning and not being mad that you gotta go somewhere to go work for. <laughs> Porque no quieres trabajar o <laughs> por lo que sea, güey. <laughs> por lo que sea. You know, I wasn't happy going to work at Ross, fool. Oh, that wasn't happiness. <laughs> I woke up happy to come here today. Mm -hmm. That to me is happiness, fool. Is waking up and not feeling obligated to do something, fool. Like I think that's bad, dog. Like that's you know to to wake up, fool, and you don't feel like you want to go somewhere, even though that enables you to eat. That sucks, fool. That sucks, fool. You know, like I encourage people, fool, to find something that they want to do for because it makes them happy. Fool, I know it's easy to see. It's, I know it's easier said than done yeah. because most people don't have the opportunity to do what they love. You know, yeah. Like my dad, I'm sure he didn't want to wake up and go fucking make alarms for cars. No, hell no. You know what I'm saying? But he had to. But what I'm saying is that, like, that to me is happiness. Fool, is waking up and and. and Doing what you love, you know, like I think that that is the ultimate happiness, bro. You know, spending time with your family. I think that that's what it boils down to. For, you know, I've lost people in my life where I, I don't I don't get to see them again, and that pain is 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 whack. For like you know, I, I nobody wants to go through that. You know, so it's like just spend time with the people you like for, and, and and the people you want to be around with. You know, did that shit affect you a lot? What losing, losing people. Yeah, everything like it, it changes. You know, it changes the way you think. You know, like it changes, like your process of how you, you know, do shit in life. You know, depending on how much that person affected you. I cried when Kobe died, like a baby. I cried when Kobe died, bro. Because me watching him since I was ten years old, watching him grow up, playing basketball, like all that shit, knowing how his mentality worked and his work ethic. Like he taught me shit that he didn't even know he taught me. Right. Mm -hmm. So when he died, it was like it was like losing a home. He's like losing a mentor to me, bro. Yeah. I remember my dad cried because I was crying because he knew how much it affected me. That's crazy, bro, yeah. to have people affect you that way, you know? There's people, you know, there's singers that die and people cry because their music made them feel a certain way, you know, or took them out of depression or helped them get through a certain time, you know? But people will always, when people die that you admire, that you love, Yeah, it's going to change the way you think and the way you process things, you know? When you lost one of your closest, how did that make you feel? Was not happy, fool. Obviously. I wasn't like, nah, let's go. <laughs> My boy made it to the Purdy Gates. Let's go. Nah. <laughs> nah, <I mean, laughs> that fool made it first. Let's go. <laughs> Nah, you know what I'm saying, dog? Like, well, yeah, I was sad, fool. What do you want me to say? Is this where you put that little sad music right here for the little piano? Ta cabrón, way. It fucking hurt, dog. It fucking hurt. It fucking hurt, dog. Cue the, cue the sad music. Let me get it here. Let me get it here. Let me get it here. Hey, zoom in a little more right now, fool. Do that little zoom in you do, fool. You guys are notorious for that, huh, fool? Hey, millions of views. Yeah, 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 yeah. We put hey, a hill song so or some So when you took a shit, fool, how did your stomach feel? <laughs> it felt good, dog. Zoom in. Put the little sad music. 
<laughs> he's a comedian, so he's not gonna cry. He just wants to make a joke. What? I already <laughs> cried in another podcast. That's his, way. That's his way of crying. I already <laughs> cried in another podcast. Fool, man, I see a pinche comedian joyon. Who cries in every podcast? Man, I see no mames, man. Te imaginas? Man, I see ese ando más años llorando por todas partes. Pinche like on Christina and shit. I fool over there on fucking. I fool on Christina just llorando fool all the time. Fool just crying every podcast. Sorry, fucking. I'm sorry, fool. <laughs> Man, good for you. We had the mariachi coming to start playing. Fuck, I know. Fool. But you guys, yeah, fool, cue the little piano right there, dog. Oh, in every video, every clip, every video, I just... see it, fool. I... <laughs> we, 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 choose the, we choose the right sound for it, but we're like, we play like three different songs. We're like, is this a good one? Is it, uh, oh, that one's it. One? That one's it. And then zoom in, just a little zoom in. Who edits that? Who edits that? Who do you think edits that? I don't know. That fool right there? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, nah. I don't know. I don't know who edited it. Me, fool. You edited it. I get, all, oh, I get yeah. all the the comments and stuff. I just read them. Like, yeah, it's okay if you're mad today, bro. It's just, okay. It's okay. You don't need yeah. to bring here. <laughs> it's okay, bro. You fools are good with the sad music. I'm the one that deletes the comments si, when this fool replies. Yeah. <laughs> Por favor. I know. Hey, fool. If you're sad today, if you're sure sad you today, it's okay. Smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I be seeing your shit. Fools be hella depressing sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like, people be. <laughs> Yeah, you be having people say like the most depressing shit, like yeah, fool, fuck, dog. My dog died yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I seen the cat run over yesterday, and yeah, it fool. made me think of my like, dog. I me cortaron el agua, güey, and I was right there, fool. Pinche <laughs> todo enjabonado, estaba bien enjabonado, and I couldn't see porque estaba bien enjabonado y me cortaron el agua in the middle of my shower. <laughs> It's because most of the people that come, they don't talk about shit, bro. Yeah. Like, they have, like, this thing yeah. inside of them, like, I gotta get it out today. A toast to life is, like, free therapy, fool. Vienen aquí a soltarse, güey. No, ahorita. Todos, todos like, quieren, güey. Todos yeah. quieren venir a... Our accountant right there, she's gonna give you the bill for the therapy right now. For the now. therapy <laughs> session, huh, yeah, fool. Yeah. Fuck. No, y cobra, cobra mucho, güey. We'll give you a discount, fool, just because you didn't cry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, if you bring tacos good. next time. No, wait, just cover the parking, spot? fool. Just cover the parking outside, fool. Let's test it out. Well, por favor, dog. That's on por favor, dog. Yeah, fool. You guys invited me to dinner and I have to pay. A la verga, no mames. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I mean, after this concrete said we're going on his on his uh, tab. We're gonna oh. go to the bar, go get. Food. Oh no, me digas no, 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 no. Not here, <laughs> no. Yo no tomo, güey. Yo no tomo so pura agua. Well, it's expensive yeah. here. He said bro. all you can drink too. I went to go get a coffee downstairs, like seventeen dollars a coffee. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Who's making imagina, it? Imagina, like a little imagina, Colombian imagina kid back there. <laughs> A little Colombian kids out there. Little got, Colombian, little Colombian. Colombian. Like He's stepping on the fucking <laughs> granos de café in the back. It's like, it's coming, guys. Ahí viene el café. Fuck. Oh, oh, like, you guys don't have Folgers or some shit, dog? Like, Folgers? Fuck. <laughs> Hey, just get it out the packet, fool, and just put that shit. He's like, bring it to me. I'll do that shit myself. Por favor. I go, I, I go to 7-Eleven, dog. <laughs> I love it, fool. Before Check. I get to my studio in the morning, fool, I stop at 7 Eleven, fool. Sabe igual, güey. I can't, I cannot, like, I cannot have shit. I'll get chorro. From what? From whatever the fuck I eat at 7 Eleven. For coffee? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Well, coffee's oh, already. I'm lactose. I'm co lactose. Coffee's already a fucking. It, 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 it makes you feel weird, you know what hey, I'm saying? How'd you feel after going to the restroom? How'd you feel after going to the restroom? Nah, pues la panza se me aflojó. <laughs> <laughs> what does Shadi Bay say? Tengo, oh. tengo churros. <laughs> tengo churros. Oh, no. All fucking sad, bro. This, this, All is, the, fucking sad. this is the saddest podcast S ever, bro. Sweating his fucking the restroom with the churros. <laughs> La vena coming. Oh. Yeah. No, this, you don't even have to push you it. You guys will have out, a guy bro. in a wheelchair and be like, how does it feel not to be able to walk? Like, what the fuck, dog? It sucks, dog. It sucks. And still... <laughs> Have you ever gotten a flat tire? <laughs> uh, no, they're, uh, I've actually never. Like, they, they, don't get, they don't get pulled on the stretch yeah. or they get towed away, bro. So was this part of an accident? No, I was born like this. Oh, fuck. You guys, you guys got to say. You guys don't have a blind motherfucker be like, so you're talking about contacts? <laughs> you guys are like, that's fucked up, huh? Come over this way. Come over this. How do you yeah. envision your life? Yeah, right? how do you envision your life going forward, moving forward? <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. It's cold, though. How do you envision your life, huh? 
Fuck. He's not the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a, he what kind of books do you like to read? Oh, my bad. Spencer, <laughs> Spencer. I mean, in Braille and shit, you know? Like. The book of Eli is shit, nah, I, know, I know a blind fool that reads more than us, fool. Not that way. I can't take you serious. I'm sorry. Fool. What? <laughs> I know, yeah, I know a blind fool that reads more than, than I do. Oh, Not that way. Audiobooks? Mm hmm. He, <laughs> it's yeah, he, he got hurt, fool. He, he was a welder, fool, and shit sparked in his eye, fool. He can't see no more. That's the homie, fool. That's the homie, Mira Todo. Mira Todo. That's what we call him, fool. Mira Todo. Fool. <laughs> I swear to God, fool. If we get canceled after this episode, we know what? El Mira Todo. <laughs> nah, he's cool, fool. He doesn't care, fool. <laughs> oh, he's cool, fool. He that can, fool. He can see you for who you are. Yeah, no, that fool's he cool. He can see you for who you are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's sick, fool, because he has, like, he has Gucci glasses, Louis Vuitton. Oh, he doesn't give a fuck. He spends so much money on eyewear, fool, it's crazy. Oh, shit. Oh, okay, I'm okay. dead serious, fool. He's cool, fool. Shout out to Mira Todo. What's it's up, Perrito? It's like those people that are weird churches. Well, he's probably not even watching this, shit. obviously, but. <laughs> what? It's, this is an audio <laughs> podcast, right, too, right? Yeah. Okay, so he'll hear it. So you <laughs> Shout out to him for shout, shout out, out to, shout him. to my boy Mira Todo. What's up, Perito? Gang, gang. <laughs> Just so you know, if I threw up like hand signs right now. <laughs> Just so you know, I threw up the signs. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. All right, all right, all right. Fuck. Yeah, we had to make it funny, fool, towards the end, fool, because you guys are all sad and shit. Nah, fool, I'm crying, but not because I'm sad, fool. I'm crying uh, because oh, I'm sweaty. Fucking. Oh, fuck my stomach. I got abs after this. I was shit, about fool. to ask you for a motivational quote, but I mean, que los tiras. Chale ganas, güey. De un chiste de Pepito, güey. Chale ganas, güey. ¿Cómo se llama el hijo de Hércules? <laughs> ¿Cómo se llama? Herculito. Herculito. <laughs> <laughs> That's the funny thing, bro. That little homie's horn. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to call me El Culito. What's his, what's his oldest brother's name? <laughs> El Culote. El Culote. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, bro. My stomach hurts. <laughs> Damn. Oh, I'm sweating all the way sweaty. If anybody is looking for motivational from concrete. You won't get it. Go to my page. <laughs> go to Gary V's page or some shit, bro. <laughs> oh, shit. I don't know. I don't know that guy. I was like, don't wake up in the fucking morning and just say fuck the world and don't get a job. You know, it's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Gary V's wild, bro. That was he's so motivational. That needs to get some sleep. Have you ever seen that fool's face? Though? Like he don't get no sleep, bro. <laughs> Yahweh. Have you uh, seen his? No, he's handsome, fool. No, no, no he's he has it. Oh, you got a motivational? You got a motivational speaker? No, no, no he doesn't I, have I no letterman, no way. No letterman? Bro, I slept like two, three hours last night. Oh, you look good for, for not sleeping, fool. <laughs> if I don't sleep for, if, if, if I don't get my full six or seven, fool, body, I got it. I'm still young as fuck. I got eight today, fool, as you can see. I got I, I live in life, you can see. I, I, we live in life. I gotta get my hair braided right now, fool. Seeing so con esa, güey. Yeah. Creo que los vamos porque ya. We were gonna get canceled already because of the go- the jokes. We didn't make him cry. He left us off with the pepito jokes. Didn't talk about his <laughs> issues with the stomach. No, it's not not issues, bro. Just you know when you laugh so much, you like your stomach. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's what it is. But no, I'm gonna need some tongues. I'm gonna some tongues. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much for thank you for having me for for driving so far, fool. You know, I know you're not used to this side of town anymore. And no way. <laughs> no, okay. pobres, no. He was when I when I went down for him. He's like, hey, fool, this shit looks different. Fool. I remember when this shit was crap. I was like, yeah. <laughs> no, it's just nice, fool. You guys got a peanut table and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Little peanut table. It's cool, dog. Oh, Roasted cacahuate, peanut baby. table. Para que te vea, para que veas cómo te cuidamos. Es el cacahuate, güey. Así se llama. Cacahuate. But honestly, I appreciate you. Um, for taking the time, coming through, looking at your DMs, finally. Thank you, fool. And don't pick <laughs> all the like contra bullshit shit that I said, fool. Pick the cool shit, fool. After like 10 fucking DMs. I know. Don't be, and three don't, causes. Don't be slicing up the reels making me look bad, fool. I'm gonna, I know I know how to edit, fool. I know, you, edit, I know you're gonna cut some shit up, fool. Huh? <laughs> hey, but shout out to the blind homies. <laughs> to the what? To the blind homies. Shout, <laughs> to, out, shout yeah, out. I'll see y'all later, man. <laughs> Talk to the live podcast. Make, yeah, t- make sure you go. subscribe, you tune yes, in, and you keep sharing, man. Thank you all. Gang, gang. No, mommy.